Welcome to Shorty Supercoach. Going to get stuck into another play profile in a minute, but before we do, Merry Christmas to everyone out there. Hopefully you're having a good day and getting plenty of food into you, a few presents, plenty to drink, to have a bit of fun, but not too much to drink that you can't look half the family in the eye the next morning. And uh, look, we're going to have a look at a man today who does seem to resemble a few presents I've got in the past. We're going to take a look at Max Gorn, the big ruckman from the days. And do you ever get the present from Nan where you look around and Every other cousin's got the same present. Everyone else in the room's got their can of deodorant or a pair of jocks or a block of chocolate. Nan's just gone down to local Kmart and gotten uh, everyone the same gift, which is all fine. It's all fine. Maybe it's just mine, Nan. I, I appreciate it. Thanks, Nan, if you've gotten onto YouTube in your later years. But look, I think Max Gorn, yes, everyone's going to have him, but it's pretty important you do. You know, I'm not giving you a Christmas miracle here by telling you Max Gorn's going to be a good selection, but I'll tell you what, if you don't have him, you might pay a serious price. I think the ruck is going to be an extremely easy task for us at the moment, providing no injury to Max Gorn or Nick Nat. But certainly I think if you don't have Max Gorn under the Christmas tree, then you could be in for a bit of pain. And I think it is pretty clear. I mean, I don't think I've got to spend too much time convincing you as to why Max Gorn's an outstanding selection. You know, his price at 503k, 91.6 average last year, and that was, of course, because he had a fair chunk of it was spent on the injury list with the hamstring. Did his hammy against the Cats, ended up having to have surgery on it. You know, only scored 27 against the Cats, which did affect the average a bit, but also just a bit of a slower second half of the season. Returned in that later part of the season, had some really good games. You know, he scored 113 upon return, but really did slow in the last month of the season. So that ended up seeing him average 91.6. Of course, we all know 2016, he was just dominant. Outstanding, unbelievable season, averaged 118.5. And that was sort of on the cards after averaging 102.1 from 13 games in 2015. And that was off the back of an enormous breakout, rising nearly the 40 points, 63.2 he averaged in 2014. So Max Gorn, when fit, I think he's the dominant ruckman of the competition. He's so big, a contested mark, can really drift forward and do some damage, but it's that tap work. I mean, he's such a big unit. He's so hard to stop. I think the fact that the third man up rule is gone really helps him a lot. So I think everything, when going and fit, he is the best in the competition. So to get him at that sort of a price makes him a no-brainer. The only cause for concern or word of warning is, of course, that injury history. Now, I did a video last year saying I wasn't going to go with Max Gorn, and it was largely based off his injury history in combination with a huge price tag. Now, as we all know, I got a few wrong last year, but I think not going with Gorn was a reasonable selection because he did end up getting injured. Started the season really well, but didn't did cop an injury. So, hence, I think, paying a huge price tag for a guy with that sort of an injury history. And if you're not aware of it, from 2011 to the present, these are the games he's played year on year. 4, 13, 9, 13, 22 in 2016, of course, that big year, and then 13 last year. So, we're looking at five out of six seasons there where he's missed seven to nine games sort of thing. So, it's... It's really concerning, and, and some he's been ruled out for a long period of time. Now, you'd like to think that he's got to a point in his life where he is a mature age player now. He's a hardened body. You know, he's a he's a big, lanky fella. It takes a long time for those sort of guys to not only play good footy at AFL level, but their body to become accustomed with the rigours of the game. So you'd like to think that Gorn has got his body to that point where he can really start to see his body performing year on, year out. Of course, the 13 games last year was disappointing, but the hamstring isn't something that's been a long-causing injury for him. If my memory serves me correct, I'm pretty sure he had a fair few knee problems. So I'd have to double-check that. But I'd have to say we've just got to lock him in. I mean, if he is going fine through the JLT, he's looking good, he's training then you've just got to get him. Whether he plays one, two, whatever games through pre-season, I don't think it matters too much. I don't think it matters how he scores. I think for him it's about getting to round one, fit and healthy, and we just know that he can turn it on if he can get to that round one mark with a full pre-season behind him and a fit and healthy body for Max. So I think most people will be agreeing with that. As I said off the top, it's not something that is groundbreaking. I'm telling you anything different, but 
you certainly don't want to miss out on that deodorant can from Nam because everyone else is going to have it and they're going to be going pretty nicely throughout the year. So I think we've got to jump on Gorn with that slight little asterisk of how's the body going. But despite an injury history, at that price, if he gets through pre-season well, then we've got to go through him with the season. And if he does cop an injury throughout, which may well happen, then we've just got to say, well, look, it was certainly worth the punt. And hopefully, fingers crossed, he can have a season like 2016. So let me know your thoughts on Gorn. As I said, I hope you're having a good day today. And by all means, comment away, subscribe to the channel. We've clicked over the 900, which I'm stoked about. That was something that I think I, I maybe just edged on last year, very close. And then, of course, with a bit of a break in between seasons, um, had to try and climb back up and get over that mark. So really glad to do so. Hopefully, we can top the 1,000 before uh, pre-season finishes. That'd be great. But yeah, comment away, subscribe to the channel, give it a like, that'd be great. I'll talk to you soon.